You're watching Tech Talk in affiliation with Tech for Techs. We're a community that supports independent trade with the help of vendors and distributors. We're live every Thursday at 8 p.m. London time and we'll be streaming to Facebook and YouTube, Twitter and Twitch. You can listen to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, Google, TuneIn and many more. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, and your host, Philip Griffiths. Well, hello. Let's start again. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Tech, Tech, Tech Talk. This is a live show, and today I'm in Facebook jail. More about that in a few minutes, but let me introduce you to the guests in a few seconds. But before you do that, let us know if you can hear us and see us. So we on the show tonight, we've got Ben. Let me get him out of jail. One second. Here we go. Uh, so we've got Ben on the show. We've also got Will. We've got Alison as well. And we've also got Sharon. We'll let them introduce themselves in a few seconds. But obviously, again, guys, if you want to comment in the comment section, just let us know if you can see and hear us and that we're not just talking to ourselves because it'd be a pretty boring show if that's going to be the case. Right. Let's go to Ben first. So, Ben, do you want to introduce yourself? Let us know who you are what you do, and if you've got any tips or stories or anything for us today. Yeah, hiya, Phil. Uh, I'm Ben Ashcroft. I run Bugs and Bytes Computing in Lincoln. Uh, mainly I'm doing trade sales of laptops to shops and uh, also do a bit of customer end-user work, gaming PCs, that sort of thing. Um, my tech tip, kind of related to communicating with your customers, actually, um, go and visit your customers, I would say, uh, no matter how close or further afield they are. I've... I think this is the first Tech for Tech show that I actually have met everyone on the show in person. Um, so, yeah, I just come back from doing a week long tour around England. Um, I went to Coventry, Somerset, Devon, Bournemouth, Southampton, Essex, and back home. It was an eight day, nine day tour. Um, and it's surprising what you find out when you go see folk in their shops, uh, the ways you can sort of help them that you maybe aren't already helping in the stock that you can sort of supply them with they might be looking for but aren't getting currently sort of thing so yeah and no. you get a few uh drinks along the way as well so that's nice okay thank you for that ben right come on guys i can see there's some of you watching uh, comment would be actually nice uh, so we could actually reply to you um let's go over to will next so will introduce yourself let us know who you are what you do and if you've got any tips and stories for us today I'm Will Smith. I'm the better looking actor. Um, I own SMS PC and iPhone repair. I fix stuff. I buy stuff. I sell stuff. I recycle stuff. I own a little high street store in Chard. Um, my tip of the day is the Windows 11 context menu. I, I don't like it. I don't like having to expand it every time I want some of the old Windows 10 options. So uh, I think I sent you a link, Phil. If you could pop that up or put it in the description. Yeah, I'll put that in chat yeah. now for anyone who's watching. Quick little command you can put into the new Windows terminal. It creates a little registry edit that gives you the old Windows 10 context menu back. And that's in the chat now. There we go. So uh, thank you for that, Will. So we do have at least one person watching. Hello to our only watcher tonight. We've got Peter Whitehouse. So we're just going to be talking to him tonight by the sounds of it because everyone else is either really quiet or they're not watching. I know there's some of you watching out there because I can see the numbers, but uh, you are a bit quiet tonight. So we're probably trying to figure out how to use YouTube instead of Facebook for a change, but we'll come to that in a few minutes. Right, let's go over to Alison now. Alison. If you want to introduce yourself, tell everyone who you are, what you do, and if you've got any tips or stories for us today. Hello. Yes, I'm I'm Alison. I'm um, one half of EADR. We run a specialist stage recovery company. Uh, we're situated in Norfolk, but we work on behalf of clients all over the UK and into Europe. Very lucky and privileged to work with a lot of uh, members of the Tech for Tech group. So uh, good to see you here. Um, it's not a tip as such, it's more of a little feel good story actually for something that's happened this week for us. Um, a little bit of pay it forward. We uh, asked a local uh, IT, sorry, a local engineering company um, a couple of weeks ago. I had to wander around the new estate that we um, moved to uh, earlier on this year and uh, we gave them a, a job for us to make something um, bespoke. 
Um, and it was so small, they decided not to charge us, which we thought was really sweet, although we offered to pay. So I um, left them a really nice Google review and sent them a little gift to say thank you from us. And um, unbeknown to us, his uh, brother-in-law ran an IT support company and he recommended over uh, us to them. And we've got our first job from just being a little bit nice to people and them doing the same back to us. So it isn't, it's, it's not always... Um, what you know, it's who you know and how you interact with people locally. So I say get out there and see who's in your community that you can link with because you never know who they know. Yeah, I totally think um, your local community is something what a, a lot of people actually need to tap into a bit more than they actually do. So, yeah, definitely, Alison, there. And also, hi to Rayleigh Computer Shop as well. So, evening, guys. Thank you for tuning in on YouTube for a change. Uh, let's move on to Sharon now. So, Sharon, if you want to introduce yourself, let us know who you are, what you do, and if you've got any tips or stories for us today. Right. Well, Sharon Richards is the name. Eurosoft UK Limited is the game. And so <laughs> it's the PC Tech Diagnostic Group that you may all be familiar with by now. We've had lots of discussions on the Tech for Tech channel, and um, I've learned so much from this group. And if there was ever anything about communication, it is definitely, you know, getting to grips with what the guys need out there, the guys and the gals, I should say. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And my, my tip um is really about no matter how frustrated a customer might be, um, it's usually come. It usually comes down to something else or a whole stream of things that are annoying them, and you just end up being the focus of that frustration. Don't ever give up on your customers. Don't ever give up on communicating with them, no matter how nasty it might seem. They're they're all great. They are. That's my tip. Right, thank you for that, Sharon. That's uh, definitely a good tip there. Right, okay, so I suppose you guys want uh, a little bit of information about what I've been up to for the last week. Ooh, shall we say <laughs> Facebook ban uh, again? So, Sorry. Yeah, I've, for some reason, and I'm not 100% sure why, because the uh, messages I got were very basic. It's basically saying, you've done something wrong. And it could be one of these things on this list. And you look at it and go, um, I'm not sure I've done any of those things, but uh, apparently I have. The only interaction I've really had is in the Tech for Tech group. That's all I really use Facebook for. Very rarely post on my personal page unless it's Tech for Tech related, like reviews and stuff like that. So not exactly sure why. The last thing I posted was about Tech Awards because some people had uh, submitted for some awards for like the store repair benches and stuff like that. And they hadn't included the business name. So I've made a post in the Tech for Tech group asking for that. And all I can think is, is one of those pictures somewhere, what I posted, what someone sent me was copyright and <coughs> Facebook's picked it up and blocked me for whatever reason. Uh, I've even got the messages, what they've sent me, just to show you what's uh, what I've been through. So first thing I knew, uh, I think it was Monday night, uh, it just came up, uh, got an email like this, fill you with 30 days to take action. I didn't click the link on the email or anything because I thought, you never know, could be a scam. So I just tried logging into Facebook and wham, bam, it wouldn't let me in. So you got, uh, click the link, say um, what it says, uh, you need to uh, click this link to appeal and so forth, which I've done. Uh, and it basically asks for your photo ID, which if I get the right message up, be this one. Uh, it just comes up and says, we can't review the decision to disable your account. We have fewer reviewers available due to the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. So we can't review this decision at this time, which is like, um, okay. And then about 10 minutes afterwards, I got uh, um, the message saying, we've determined that you're ineligible to use Facebook to learn about the policies. And it's just their basic legal terms and conditions, which is about 100 pages long. Um, so I've not had much luck. So when I try and log in on my phone, your account is disabled, you have 30 days, and then it goes around in the loop again, do exactly the same things, and pretty much stuck, to be honest with you, in that uh, respect. So what have I done? Not sure. How am I going to get back in? That's another question. Um, obviously, I did try creating an account straight away, and it they blocked that as well. So God knows why. So I do have another account I have set up. I'm using a different phone number and so forth, email address and so forth. 
which uh, is going to be a bit of a pain to get all set up and all linked in and everything again. Um, but the good thing is, is on most of the stuff, Jen is put down as the owner as well. So even though I've been blocked out, she can still access. Obviously, she's still the admin of the group and so forth. And we've got a second account, what we've set up as well, just in case anything happens to her account going forward. So, yeah, so that's my my few days, which has made things very, very, very complicated and a bit of a pain because, obviously, even things like the live shows, they usually get posted directly into the group using my Facebook account, which I don't want to even try putting it on Jen's account because what if because we posted a link to that, it caused an issue and I don't want to use hers and then get blocked out of that one. So we're taking it a step at a time, but all been well. We should be back to normal probably within the next probably day. Well, well not day, probably within the next week, to be honest with you. I'm hoping uh, we may miss a live show next week. Um, we have other things going off as well at the moment, uh, which I'll tell you about once I know 100% if it goes off or not. Um, and obviously, we've got the awards going off. But regarding the awards, we have reopened the awards for voting on a specific page i'll get that up in a second i didn't actually get that on the page but um well, we've got a specific page set up for anyone who wants to um, put their name down for an award for one of the um, categories which we think could have caused the issue on facebook which was the photo anything to do with photos so it's like storefront uh repair bench best display area stuff like that uh, automotive signage um we've opened the um the the nominations back up for that section so we can give people a second chance to actually put the details down so we're going to allow voting to go on for another week so the nominations we will close on monday totally and then come next week um on the monday uh we'll then obviously um sorry on Monday, we'll stop the nominations and then allow votings for all the tech awards for the tech and the stores, and then give people an extra week to do the actual vote until the 7th of November instead. So it gives everyone a chance then. Uh, but uh, it's been a, been a bit of a week and a half, or a week, should I say, because of all this. But we're still here, we're still alive, we're still trading, and we're still live. So... Uh, uh, not too bad in the end it's not as if someone's dead apart from facebook count but that's another thing but anyway enough about me let's move on um let me just put the link on for you so just give me one second okay so if anyone does and uh, want to put themselves down for one of those awards what i've just mentioned i'm just putting the link in chat now um, which is there. So it's techprotect.co.uk forward slash awards hyphen extra. Um, that will then allow um, you to submit <clears throat> any pictures or anything like that you want to be down for awards. Okay, so make sure you get that done if you are wanting to. Even if you've done it already, do it again just in case um, because a lot of people did submit details without any names of the businesses, which makes things a bit hard in the vote. And so I'd like to make sure everyone gets a chance. But otherwise, on the vendor show, um, on the vendor awards and the distributor awards, we've had over 650 votes in already for those. So there's a lot of people voting, and no doubt we'll get a lot more once we get the text and the store votes uh, up as well. So, right, enough about me being in Facebook jail. Let's get back to the show and talk about. <laughs> what we're going to be here and that's customer communication something what facebook is definitely not doing with me at the moment um so right let's start off with how do we communicate with people and so forth i'm going to mix things up because i know Alison is really good at customer communication because I've dealt with her a few times and I'm pretty sure she gets some real difficult customers between in the sort of job she does. So I'm going to start off with you. Let's hear your tips or your advice, how you communicate um, with people, Alison. So I'm going to stick you at the top of the page. There we go. Sorry, Ben, you've been demoted. <laughs> um, yes, we do get lots of awkward customers it's just a case of managing expectations really um, um they often don't understand really the the sort of complexity of what is required with their uh, particular case especially if it's sort of more of a um a, a mechanical 
problem where we have to fix the drive and they just say well can't you move it from a to b you know I, if you could do that then I'd, I'd have my magic needle and my magic wands that I've, i'm quoted to have um so often it is a case of explaining things carefully and trying to just not dumb it down but make it easy for them to understand um so and my my sort of suggestion is make sure that you've got you've put in writing what you've said to the customer. That's probably my biggest tip because um, you said this and you said that, that isn't going to cut it if it comes to sort of coming down to a problem later down the line. Um, so I would say make sure you you deal with the inquiry in writing. We do get inquiries from all different avenues. It's quite difficult to juggle sometimes because not only do we have the website, we have Facebook Messenger. A lot of people message me through there. Um, fortunately, I haven't got WhatsApp activated. Um, but then we get calls from people saying, oh, I've been given your details by so-and-so. Can you talk to me about this? And um, so I, I try to sort of formalize a contact in that way. So we've, we've actually got an email path of, of what's been said and agreed okay that sounds pretty good Alison does anyone else do anything like that do you keep uh, a list of your communications with your customers um, whether it's written or on messenger or anything like that will Ben Sharon oh definitely yeah. I can step in on that one for sure yeah I'm right with Alison on that yeah it's, it's a good thing to do how would you deal about that with someone who was dealing with someone face to face in a store though I know how I dealt with it. I want to see how you guys deal with it. I have CCTV that records audio. Um, so I always have that. I also have a job order sheet that is filled out from the moment the customer walks into the shop to book in a repair. That all gets filled out of all the notes that then get typed up online. So we have a record of exactly what was said, how often they've been in, phone calls, etc. Yeah, that's pretty good. Similar, similar sort of thing we used to do with the store is uh, we used to have... Um, <laughs> four main cameras pointing that near enough than um, the counter and then one it was near enough like a, a gopro type thing um to be honest with you as as a second backup paint pointing directly at the table so they can actually see when people sign stuff because you'd be surprised how many people say i never signed anything mm -hmm. and it's like uh yeah you did um so but it's usually um either people trying to have you on or sometimes communications issues people don't understand and stuff like that um let's move on to ben because he's been a little bit quiet up to now so ben tell us about your communication things what do you do to communicate with customers how do you keep in contact how do you onboard them as a customer even um, i'm quite sort of fortunate um that most of my customers at the moment or recently are coming through the computer repair man uh website i mean i'm moving away from the end user i'm moving more towards trade sales now so i'm more pushing that so a lot of the guys that i chat to through the tech protects group or not you chat to my messenger anyhow um i think regarding communicating with your customers or how you communicate with your customers uh you get a vibe for your customers when you see them certainly when you meet them face to face you tend to get that vibe very quickly on your customers and you can pick out the ones that are going to be a, a complete <laughs> and also a nightmare and you pick out the ones that are going to be really easy and simple and straightforward to get on with um and i think for the ones that are going to be a bit nightmare you just need to be very sort of firm but very fair and don't let them sort of take the proverbial uh piss as it were um yeah um <laughs> being nice they're always the nice customers will always get more out of you yeah. and get more empathy and probably end up getting a better deal out of you do you Good sort chance. of get that feeling when you get a customer who comes in who's who you just know is going to be a bad customer um or a problem customer or however you want to do it do you do you always get that and do you treat them differently because you have that vibe or do you treat them the same as everyone else it makes you very much more guarded um so i had i had one last saturday it was um Probably a bit politically incorrect. I called them pikeys. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're really rough. This fellow and son came in and um, they basically ended up threatening me. Now, I work from home, so they came into my own house and threatened me, you know, which is never a good email sort of thing. But eventually I got rid of them. But these guys have been sort of trying it on with a few local shops, a couple of guys on Tech Protects, you know. Um, and my colleague Steve is in as well, which is really handy because Steve's a hefty fellows i think who described them <laughs> um and so the kind of but they saw him 
the kid I didn't want to sort of cause too much aggro. And I'm a tall guy. So I think my height works for my advantage. I'm like six seven, so I think folk you know not to sort of cause too many issues. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, we've all had those bad customers. We've all had the customers that try to pull one over on us as well. It's, it's unfortunate. It's a part of the job. You will get the odd one now and again. Um, I think what is it? One percent of your customers give you ninety nine percent of your problems. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've heard that quite often. It's like uh, it's the same with reviews. You, it's like if you get a good customer, you probably only find one out of a hundred will actually give you a good review. Where if you get like a bad customer, they'll tell like a hundred people sort of thing. So it's a sim- similar sort of thing. But yeah, definitely agree. It's a good question. What's just come in from Reddit? I think that's how you pronounce your surname. Is how do you deal with customers who don't want to listen? <sighs> That goes for all of you. I'll go to you, Sharon, on this one. <laughs> well, I'm kind of in that that seat where people typically want to listen because the, the tools that we provide, those those diagnostic tools, are supposed to be finding problems. So it's a it's a two way street, and I, I rarely have um, a customer. Sorry, Phil, a customer that wants to you know close the door, sign off on email, you know, shut down the Teams meeting. It just doesn't happen like that. There's, we're always looking to find an answer. So that's uh, maybe I'm in a better position. I have in, in, in my day, I've had uh, the experience of being in shops, but typically um, not, not too much of an irate customer. I mean, we've had, we've had uh, development challenges um, with some of our bigger customers along the way, um, but it really came down to setting up, you know, understanding what their processes were, what they really wanted to do in their, their testing and in production, for example. Um, and possibly even um, medium online, walking around their shop virtually, all, all those types of things will, you know, allow us to have that to maintain that that facial, um, you know, personal touch. So we get to the to the solution. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm the odd one out here. <laughs> well, we'll know. soon find out. We'll we'll <laughs> take this question and pass it on to Will. So how do you deal with a customer who doesn't want to listen? Then Will depends on what you mean. They don't want to listen. If it's a difficult customer, I tend to leave them to cool down. So I just pacify them as much as I can, you know, just tell them the truth. I never lie because it always gets you into a worse position. Mm. And I tend to call them the next day. Um, I always make sure the calls are recorded or the communication is written down. Um, I don't tend to have, well, I had a few employees that caused a bit of friction a couple of years ago. Since then, I can't remember the last time I had a bad customer. Okay, that sounds pretty good. What about you, Alison? I'm guessing you get a few demanding customers now and again who have lost all the photos or videos or pictures of grandma and stuff like that. Yeah, it's demanding. And then obviously, I mean, the fact is when we when you've got a complicated case uh, and the drives are in a really bad way, um, they will only allow us to work as fast as they will allow us to give the data up. So if they can pressure and pressure and pressure. But unfortunately, if it's not coming off as quickly as they'd like, then we just have to manage the expectations. I know I've said that before, um, but, you know, we have to explain to the clients that, you know, this is in a bad way and it will only go this quickly. We are going as fast as we can. Um, if there are bits that we can get off earlier um, that are more time sensitive, then of course we'll do that if we can drill down to those bits first. Um, but we have to explain to them that you know this is this is the situation, I'm afraid. Um, so we we all, all we can do is all we can at the end of the day. Um, we can't make promises. Oh, that's uh, pretty good. I'm gonna say we mm-hmm. always overestimate when yeah. people do things, so obviously under promise. Kind of- yeah, exactly. So if something's going to take three days for us to do, we'll quote them five days. So it covers us back if something does go wrong. Mm. But also it makes it look like you're a miracle worker if you actually get it done early. So learn that from um, Scotty out of Star Trek, if there's any Trekkies listening, and I'm guessing there is. Um, but yes. So uh, yeah, definitely agree there. Do you do anything like that, Ben? Uh, so yeah. Customers that don't want to listen, they, they can be the, the awkward ones. It's uh, if it's like they don't want to listen, they don't want to take your advice. Sometimes you just have to do that, let them go. You know, you can only you can take a horse to water, you can't make it drink. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, I I sometimes feel someone doesn't value my knowledge, and my experience enough to take on board what I'm saying, and keeps arguing against me. Then it's kind of a lost cause sometimes, and you have to know when to just leave things, let things go. You know, it's um, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think there's pretty good points there. I'm going to say personally, I wouldn't fight to keep a customer who wants uh, who doesn't listen. So I wouldn't just keep trying to explain and explain to them if they don't understand. Um, it depends on obviously the context as well. If you've got something in for repair and they don't want to listen, that you're saying that the problem's this, that, and the other, then you can well offer to just give it in back, and they can tell uh, take it elsewhere. Um, so. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, Reddick there saying, uh, thank you, top idea, I will use that advice. So obviously, I think we've answered his question uh, there. Um, Carl saying, uh, some of our customers get shirty with us. That's a nice word for it. Uh, when we explain no collection ticket, no device. I'm um, guessing probably Sharon doesn't possibly have that issue. So, or do you, Sharon? Or do you even know what, what I do? Do in a in a, another way, which everyone will be familiar with, uh, that, that okay. follow us and participate in the discussions that I get into um, on <clears throat> Tech for Tex. and that is, you know, it, it, it's it's not actual, but it's I did not get my update. My my um, file my license has expired. You know, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> and to me, that's as that's as good as that's as good as it comes. And it really yeah. comes down to you know your updates. And I might as well say it here. This is a good time to explain that. You know, your updates are a subscription service. The program you get to have, um, you know, forever and ever. And that's how it, that's how it rolls. So, you even though, how do I say? Even though a customer may be frustrated by that, um, thinking they're going to have updates the rest of their life, you know, it just it just doesn't work that way. Well, we couldn't be in business because it costs so much. There's a there's so much development time, um, and engineers and Babies' mouths to keep full of food and so on, you know. But um, but all in all, um, it, people typically um, will come around to that understanding, and they'll either you know buy the upgrade or they'll just be happy with getting you know the perpetual license for what they have, and you move on. But eventually, I will tell you, they do they do come back. <laughs> they do come back and say, oh, could I have those updates again? So the no ticket, no device is the same with, you know, no update, uh, sorry, no, no current license, no update. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's pretty good. What about yourself, Will, on that one? Um, I would tend to explain to them that it's for their security. Um, they don't want someone walking in off the street and saying, mm -hmm. hi, my name's John Doe, can I have my device, please? And I just say, yeah, there you go. And they walk away with someone else's laptop because i'm so small i know pretty much all of my customers by face and i have the cctv i have all their records etc um i tend to not have that issue because i greet them by name hello how are the kids etc um but i can see where the customer would be coming from if they're in a risk they don't have the ticket they're probably going to be frustrated because they know they're in the wrong and it is for their benefit but you just have to empathize with them. You just have to clearly explain it. If there's a way around it, great. If not, then they can come back with a ticket. Sounds pretty good, that one. What about yourself, Ben? Do you have that issue with uh, how you deal with things? Um, no, I, I, I don't, to be honest with you, because, yeah, let's say most of the stuff I do is either through computer repair management, it's, it's the trade stuff now, really. So it's, um, yeah, um, I know my like my regular customers, obviously, know them when they come in, bring stuff in. It's, it's nearly always the same person who collects stuff. So, Okay. Uh, what about yourself, Alison? Do you come across that issue? Not really. Most of our work comes in via courier or, or post. We do get we do get a few a day that come in and bring things in. But as as Will said, you you tend to if they've dropped it off, then you recognise them to come and pick it up again. Um, so that doesn't really arise for us. Okay, I totally understand. One of the ways we get around that is um whenever we've dealt with a customer and so forth and they do need to collect something from the store obviously if we visit them then it's pretty much given that if you go into the right address you're giving them the right stuff back but um but if they're actually coming into the store we always tell them on the phone or on the text or whatever if you do not bring your ticket in you will not get your device so uh, when we first started doing that doing that we found that uh, the number of people who would actually come in uh, without the ticket would uh, drop dramatically to be honest with you so rather than telling them just when they collect the uh, when they drop off the item originally so they bring the laptop in for a repair you tell them you need to bring your ticket back in a lot of people were forgetting by the time they come back in in a week or more's time to collect the device so when we text them to say come and get it or we give them a call 
we'd make sure we emphasize it a number of times that you need to bring your ticket in. If you haven't brought your ticket in, at least bring your phone in um, where you've got uh, a confirmation on your phone as well because we send out the ticket details on the mobile phones just in case they'll lose the ticket so we can verify it. So uh, um, we always tell them to do that, which usually covers things. So that might be something um, to consider regarding tickets if you haven't got it set up to text people, Carl, is to get it to text them a ticket number. So when they do come back in, they don't have to... Uh, most people have usually got the mobile phone on on them, so they can just open the text message and go, here, here's my ticket number, and away you go. So just an idea. Right, okay. So guys, in chat, the, uh, you guys who are watching, can you uh, put some more questions in for us? Do you have anything you'd like to know about dealing with customers, how to deal with customers, how to answer the phone? Is there something specific you say? Is there something you do specifically after you've dealt with the customer? Do you have any questions like that? Is any advice you've got even so obviously it's all down to you guys what content you want us to talk about so i'm going to go back around the room uh and talk to allison first okay so allison what do you do after you've dealt with a customer let's say you've sorted their issue out you've recovered all the data and so forth do you communicate with them after is there much need from your side of things to communicate with them after let's say in a year's time do you need anything doing or anything like that either if it's just an email or anything along that line um not really we don't sort of tend to follow up in that respect i mean the first thing we do um once we've actually completed a case is um, we make sure they got it back safely. So we will contact them probably within a week and just make sure that they've got everything back. They've, they've opened it all successfully. Everything is working okay for them. Generally, if there's a problem, they'll let us know quite quickly. Um, but some people just take the box and don't do anything with it. And of course, we can only keep the data safe on our servers for a, a certain period of time before we have to get it you know, removed uh, securely, which is the, the case for about a month we keep it, just to make sure they, they, they can see everything. There's been no problems with the transfer onto the new drive, et cetera. Um, and that's a point where we check in after about a week just make sure everything's okay and then we invite them to leave a review um and that you know that is another sort of touch point afterwards then they do like that they, even even though some of them are not always willing to leave a review you could have done the shiniest job ever but it's a reluctance sometimes for people to actually put uh put the keyboard into use and, and actually leave you something um yeah. they will write back to you and say you've done a good job but again putting it onto google is i don't know not everybody likes doing it um but at least we get the feedback that we need that we're doing okay and we've done a good job for them um that's the most important thing that's good. Good. Some good points there. Um, what about yourself, Will? So it's like Alex has said, when I do uh, SSD upgrades, Windows reinstall, etc., I keep their data for 30 days. I tend to do a follow up call one or two days after just to make sure they're happy with their new upgrade, new version of Windows, new computer, whatever they have. See if they have any teething issues. They're all OK. Uh, after the 30 days, I make sure they've got all their data. They're happy for me to securely dispose of it. I ask if they want it backed up to an external drive or anything just before I do that. And I will always email them uh, with like a little thank you for using us. Um, if you enjoyed your service, please leave us a review. And then I leave, give little links to our socials and our Google, etc. OK, that's pretty good. Ben, do you deal with anything like that? Yeah, again, I do the same. I keep the data for at least 30 days. Um, and again, the whole review thing. Um, I, I usually make a point of asking whether the review will well there, like if I set them up with a new laptop or a refurb laptop. Um, I'll check their own Gmail. If they're on Gmail, I'll say, do you mind just popping a review just now? We'll list them here because Gmail, you need Gmail for logging into Google. And yeah, so that's really quick. Um, always leaving business cards and whatnot as well, so you can hand them out. So yeah. Okay, it's pretty good. What about yourself, Sharon? Again, I know you're probably in a slightly different position because obviously people generally want to come back to renew, but do you chase them up? Do you send them an email saying, hey, you're due for renewal? Do you want to upgrade to anything or anything along that lines? Well, you've ticked them all there. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> I don't have much Move on. to say now. <laughs> no, seriously, um, I could actually do that a whole lot more, but I have this feeling that we're pestering. 
And in that case, you know, I, I tend to, to slack off of, you know, not bombarding people with emails. Saying that, though, I have a check-in policy, um, you know, for my, my customer base, because um, we do have other, you know, sales account um, executives and such around the world that manage their accounts. Um, but for me, the, the checking in three times a year minimum um, to make sure things are going okay is just proved wonderful. You'd be surprised how somebody will just wait until the last second, you know, and not say anything until maybe their renewal is due or, um, yeah, they just have been holding it up. But if you make a point of contacting them in advance, and it does not have to be a call, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. I, inevitably, I get a, um, a customer coming back. You know, they, they always respond. But I will say, on, on the other hand, is we also have an automated process where after somebody purchases, um, it's your satisfaction survey that goes out because we, we want to know, are they happy? If it hasn't landed, are they getting up and running? So on and so forth. Um, and we have kind of like the, the idea of the, the Google, not many people want to assign themselves to that for whatever reason, maybe they can, they smell automation and they don't want to deal with it, who knows? Um, but certainly on a, a personal note, when I contact, um, I definitely get a response. So maybe it's my desire to really want to know if there's an issue and showing that desire. And I know in a lot of cases, support um, all over the world, no matter what type of company it is, they, they you know, they don't want to deal with it. You know, please don't call me. <laughs> I don't want to know if it's good or bad. Just don't call me. And that's that's not our, you know, our usual, you know, mode of business. So maybe a little different, but definitely contacting at the right time. And just make sure you do. Touch the base. Touch base. That's good. There's a way what I do um, with customers, and if it's business or consumers, I'm going to put a link into chat. There's an app I use. Oh, it's actually a fa uh, like a page on the internet, actually, rather than an app. It's called App Toto, and it's an automated thing where if you put something on your calendar, it will either text or call the customer to remind them something. So you can actually set it up and put keywords in. For example, your Google Calendar. So let's say. I was going to say Bullguard, but that's gone. Norton, if you're with Norton or whatever security company you're using. And then basically um, you put it in your calendar on that day where you, let's say you've installed um, Norton or whatever it is on the customer's computer. And what it'll do is automatically pick up that word Norton from your calendar and go, right, I need to automatically text this customer in whatever time period you set it up as. So I'd say 11 months, so a month before it runs out, it'll automatically text them and say, hey, your security is running out in 30 days. Give us a call if you'd like to renew it. Um, or you could do something else. You haven't had your computer serviced in a year. Would you like your computer servicing and stuff like that? So it's a very good program, and you can even put your own voice to it as well. So you can have pre-recorded voices. So it'll just call them up and basically say automatically you don't have to do anything yourself. Yeah, it costs a few pennies, but it's not too bad. But I also use it for um, reminding customers that they've got appointments as well. Or if you've ever been to a doctor's or whatever, they usually have an automated call sometimes a day before or a few hours before saying, hey, you've got an appointment at 2 o'clock, make sure you come. It does similar things to that. So it actually reminds customers that you're actually going to visit them and you're actually going out in two hours' time. You'll be there. Saves you picking up the phone and <coughs> And then at least then they've got a text to say that you're actually coming round, and it actually cut down my uh, basically the amount of customers I got where I turn up and find out they weren't in, they forgot about the appointment and stuff like that. So that's the link I've put into the chat. I'll put it on the screen as well. So that's App Toto. Just look into it. It might not do what you want it to do. It may do, but I found that very useful over the years. It's uh, cut my costs down, I wasted jobs, and it's got my repeat customers coming back because they get reminders. And you can even put things in like your calendar and so forth, saying the customer thinks that they'll probably want a new PC in a year, and it'll basically uh, ring them up, hey, are you still looking for that new PC? And hey, presto. So mm -hmm. something to think about. It's cheap for what it is, uh, and it's all automated, so it saves you time, uh, which can be a big thing when you're running your own business. I know they do something like that in our uh, our CRM, so I don't know whether there was something available in Repair Shopper or something, if the guys are using that, it's like uh, some sort of diarising process. 
The, the probably is. Um, it's probably uh, very similar to that. I've not used it myself, but no doubt someone will tell me that, yeah, there is available. So, um, but yeah, so uh, if obviously you don't use that tool, use if Repair Shop or offers it, take advantage of it. You'd be surprised how many tools there are in a lot of programs that you don't even realize you've, you've basically got. But yeah, so definitely good advice there. So, Right, um, not really customer communication related uh, this one, but how often would you recommend a customer get their PC ser- um, PCs cleaned? That's down to the customer. In all honesty, um, it depends on what it is. If you're dealing with a business customer, what's in a warehouse and they've got a machine, what's getting covered with dirt, I'd recommend going out every three months to six months. But if it's a normal consumer, home consumer probably once a year. What we usually tell customers is when your security is due to be renewed, give us a call. We'll give, come out, give you a service and do your security at the same time. Uh, that's how I do it. I don't know if uh, Will or Ben do a similar sort of thing. I do the exact same thing. It just depends on the customer. I've got some very grubby customers. Bless them. They eat all over their laptops and it comes in with like a film of food, etc. on it. Uh, some need it cleaned every 30 days. Some need it cleaned once a year. There we go. What about yourself, Ben? Do you do you do that sort of thing, or uh, I do occasionally. Yeah, I usually recommend once a year. But if, if, like smokers' computers are all the worst. Bring them in like uh, sooner. Yeah. yeah, I won't go too much into it, but I've come across many different computers in the years. I've had one sitting next to cat litter boxes. What suck it all in? <laughs> to uh, filled with uh, insects and uh, little creatures, shall we say? Uh, and all sorts so yeah it depends on the customer so prob- probably best thing to do is say once a year and then if you go around after a year and it's really really dirty maybe have a word with a customer and say do it every six months or something like that uh it's really down to how you're going to do it and if you're on about internal clean or if you're on about that software clean up or both even um and obviously that's totally up to you right uh Okay, his town's on the edge of a desert, so I'm guessing he's not in the UK then. Um, so, uh, yeah, so obviously if you're going to get a lot of sand or dust in there, then you, I'd probably advise you get it done a little bit more often. But again, it's down to the customer. Some customers are cleaner than others, um, and I'll leave it at that. Right, let's get back to the main topic then. So, guys, do you have anything else you would like to add in? I'm going to start with Alison this time. So, Alison, have you got anything else you would like to add to this? So, from yes, uh, yeah, I, I do have a bit of a tip actually. That um, no, now doesn't mean no forever. Um, and the way that you handle your customer in between those two points is, um, and and keeping it professional is 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 the best thing to do. We had a couple of people who, especially with times at the moment where money is a little bit tight or they're thinking about what they're spending, they had a quotation after sending the drive in, even though we qualified them on the phone, because we spend a lot of time speaking to customers about how much things are likely to cost. Um, And obviously those who aren't serious or who the data on there isn't really that important, perhaps don't end up sending it in, which is fine. Um, But those that do, and then um, we, we give a quotation to, if they decide not to move forward, um, then obviously we explain, you know, did they realize that the that the quote was on a no recovery, no fee footing? Because sometimes quotations can be misunderstood. Um, and also that we, if, if they want to move forward, that we do offer an installment plan for them. So we give them as many options as we can before closing the door. Um, but we don't close the door forever. We just say to them, if they change their minds, then they're most welcome to resubmit it at another time. And that has actually happened. I had somebody knee jerk, well, more than one knee jerk um, in the last couple of weeks on a, on a quote and um, we talked to them about sending it back and they don't respond and then all of a sudden when you send them the invoice for return shipping is I've had second thoughts is that okay if I do that and of course you can you know but if I'd have sort of been a bit shirty with them to say look you know you didn't go forward with it here's your here's your invoice back it's just keeping that professional stance all the time because you never know when they're going to u-turn on you and when they want to come back in the future at least they know that they haven't got that hurdle of sort of warming you up again that you'll be happy to work with them okay that's pretty good thank you very much for that Alison um let's go over to you now Will do you have anything else you'd like to add <clears throat> yeah um it's about how you present yourself to your customers so when I first started in business I was a bit shy and a little bit wary of my prices 
I would always sort of say, oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be this much because I thought I was overcharging. Now I say my prices was absolute confidence. And I think it's really reassuring to my customers knowing that I'm confident in what I charge, that the service is worth it. I recently had a quote for a custom build for someone. They were quoted down the road like £50 or something like that. It's going to take me a few hours to do. All RGB fans, the lot. My quote was more around like 150 175 to get it all done. I talked to them about the bits that they had chosen for the build because they had bought all of their own parts. I made myself come across really knowledgeable and interested in what they were doing, made a few recommendations on what they were going to play, etc., and they ended up coming to me, and I think it was because I really showed an interest in showing that I knew those parts inside and out. I'd done this a lot, whereas they could have gone with someone who was three times cheaper than me, but probably didn't give them time of day, just said, yeah, drop the parts in, I'll get it built, and off you go. So really yeah. engage in your customers and be confident in your pricing <laughs> and yourself. I think that's one of the things what a lot of techs have issues with is the confidence of talking to customers. I've signed that quite often, and even talking to each other sometimes, they can, uh, we can be a, a little bit shy, and uh, especially sometimes when it's the opposite sex coming in the store, if it's someone who's attractive or whatever, maybe uh, they have issues then as well talking to them. I've seen it quite often over the years. Um <laughs> It is one of those things is it's how you present yourself, as you were saying, um, and it's not just the way you talk. It's also the way you dress as well. If someone comes in and looks at you and you're wearing a, um, a T-shirt with a, a pizza stain down the front of it <laughs> and sweaty armpits and jeans around your ankles near enough, uh, um, then you're going to put a lot of customers off by looking like that. And even if you're in a store and you've got a store and people come in and look at your store and they go, oh, it smells like KFC or something worse, it can really put people off. So I would, would advise is not only looking at how you present yourself as in how you talk to people and stuff, is actually how you physically look and your surroundings as well. Because you'd be surprised, some some computer shops do look quite dated. Um, when I say dated, I don't mean that they can't afford to update stuff. But it just looks like uh, they've not cleaned it in a 50 years or something like that is probably the best way of doing it. So no offense to any guys out there if you haven't cleaned your shop in 50 years, because you really do need to. Um, um, so it's as simple as that sometimes, just having things clean. If it's your store, your house, or wherever you're inviting them, you're going to set a different tone to the conversation. If you're dressed smart in a suit, sometimes people are happier paying people £100 if they look good rather than giving someone who looks like they've been sleeping on the park bench a hundred pounds. Um, so just make sure you look the part. Okay. So yeah, definitely agree with you there, Will. Um, but with the conversations, it's what it's really hard to talk to people though, especially a lot of us are shy. We just want to deal with the reason why we're into technology is because we don't have to, t um, to deal with customers. Hmm. But unfortunately, uh, to sell stuff, to repair stuff, you need to deal with customers. So it's just one of those things learning. And one of the things I'll tell you, which does help with your confidence and builds your confidence, is coming on shows like this and talking. Um, I've seen the difference with a lot of people who come on this show from when they first started to where uh, they are now. And they do, um, they have come out of the shells a bit more. And I would suggest that doing stuff like this or even going to local networking events and stuff like that, where you can actually communicate with people just let your guard down and just do it. Um, worst case scenario, what happens is if someone doesn't like you, you, are, you won't see them again. But um, you just need to get out there and uh, try and smile now and again, uh, which is definitely something I don't do. Uh, but uh, there we go. Right, let's move on to Ben before I start uh, rambling. Uh, so, Ben, have you got any other tips for communication? Um, just when you're on about being on the show, um, that's a great way to pick customers up depending on your business as well. It's um, one of my customers saw me on the show one night and yeah, they now buy quite regularly from me. So, um, but yeah, remember customers, your lifeline and the day, you know, it's uh, don't be a slave to your customers, but equally look after them and respect them. Uh, try and build a relationship and that's not sounding too dodgy there, but you know what I mean? No, no, you try yeah, and no, <laughs> yeah, no, try and build a bit of a rapport, a bit of a relationship, and uh, actually be a bit humble sometimes, except that sometimes you can get things wrong, and we're all human at the end of the day. Sometimes you can just both be having a bad day, and yeah. 
Okay. Sort things out. As long as you sort things out, it's all it's all good. Hopefully. Yeah, that's that's definitely good good advice there. What about yourself, Sharon? Anything else you'd like to add on to that? Well, I was just thinking about the um, the display of ourselves, but also the, the some of the customers that that we come up against. I think that, um, and I say against because it, there was a negative tone to that who you might meet and how you might smell and so on and so on. And you know, a lot of times you just a customer can't help it. You know, they are just what they are. And, um, and I find that um, I've actually seen this in process where people were judgmental towards a customer and um, whether it was for um, perhaps a physical challenge or the facility they're in is, um, you know, might not be up to standard. It might be, you know, full of a lot of sand just because of where they are. Hello, Australia. But, you know, they, they can't help that. And, you know, again, from, you know, my perspective, the tools are there to test the computer hardware to make sure it's running correctly. And, you know, I just want to look beyond every single thing, because it, it doesn't really matter to me anyways, of, you know, what's going on with that customer, you know, personally, physically, you know, where, where they're residing. Um, I think I've seen it all. <laughs> I think I've seen it all. And I've uh, been doing this a lot of years, you know, I think we're on 40 years now as a business. So, um, yeah, we've seen everything from the smallest little shop, you know, up into the, the, the biggest, you know, OEM operations. And, you know, they all have their, their variances. And like you said, Phil, is, you know, keep that smile on, but mean it. You know, that's, you can never, I don't know, people can see through a, through a fake. And so that's, again, my piece of advice, you know, be as sincere as you possibly can. Yeah. And always have that touch of humor. Always have, always have a good laugh going. There's, something's got to be funny in there. That's very, very, very true. De definitely good points there. Um, let's have a look. We just got consumer tech say, uh, without being cheesy, you know, here we go. Uh, being part of the TFT group, and having done uh, a few shows, has certainly helped my confidence. Well, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty, that's Will's, um, Mur it? consumer tech. If I'm right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Sorry, I'm just trying to think then. Uh, so yeah, well, definitely. Um, uh, I think uh, a lot of people who have been on the shows, and I'm pretty sure at least one person in here will say that as well, being on the show has helped the confidence. Um, it definitely does. One thing I'd like to uh, talk about next is how do you actually communicate with your customers normally? Do you usually use phone? Do you text? Do you email? Do you do a mixture? And how do you find the success rates are with, with those form of communications? And I'm going to start with you, Sharon, this time. So, Sharon. I think so I touched on that earlier. I touched on that earlier. How do you communicate? It's, it's, a, it's all fashion and form for us. So, initially, um, it will be either somebody's contacted us and we get back with them or we, um, you know, send out emails. Um, we do some trade events and we've had really long-term customers from, from that, um, you know, base of getting to know you, communicating, if you will. Um, and then carry on by, you know, picking up the phone and, you know, some of these, um, the team calls, we've taken that up more within the last couple of years, as I'm sure the whole world has, um, and, you know, team zoom, whatever. And that's just been, wow, it just builds that bridge that, you know, allows you to actually see, have a good laugh, you know, again, get to view their, their facility quite possibly. Um, yeah, it's, it's the way to go. And, you know, a, a, I took note of your uh, your little app there, but um, otherwise for me, it's just set the calendar, make sure you call them, you know, or set the calendar, yeah. make sure you email them. So that's that's how it rolls for me. That's, me, that's I say me, good. and the company. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Zoom teams and the rest, Skype and so forth, have, have helped things a lot in the last few mm -hmm. years, to be honest, especially when people figure out how to use their microphones and speakers. Uh, I'll not mention anything about that due to the pre-show, but uh, um, but there you go. So, but yeah, it has made a, a, a huge difference in, um, I don't know about um, consumer sales so much, um, probably business to business, probably more so uh, trade-wise, mm -hmm. but... Uh, but yeah, definitely has changed a lot of things. What about yourself? Let's go to Ben next. What form of communication do you find the most effective? Uh, phone calls. I mean, yeah. uh, it's, it's all good talking to Messenger and WhatsApp or whatnot or emails, but um, you can totally get the, the wrong the wrong vibe. I use that word again, vibe. You can totally get the wrong vibe through the written word. 
sometimes. Um, yeah, much prefer just chatting on the phone to customers or face to face. It's far easier. Okay, that's pretty good. Well, that's self will. Um, I'm like Ben. I prefer a phone call. I like to call up my customers and have a chat to them, but it depends on the customer. With my business clients, I tend to do an initial phone call and then it's just email, 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 because we're both really busy. We respect that. Obviously, if it's urgent, then it's going to be a phone call. Um, going to Will's comment for the all-in-one social media platform, um, I was looking into Hootsuite because I have the same issue. I have like Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, uh, WhatsApp, text, and they're all coming through at the same time. This apparently consolidates it all into one inbox. Haven't used it yet, but it might be something for you to look into. Okay, that sounds pretty good. I know there's Buffer as well, but I'm not sure if that um, works for text and messenger, but it does for most social media posts. But, uh, yeah, definitely a good idea. I've heard of Hootsuite, so that's good. Now, over to you, Alison, then. So what do you find the best form of communication? Um, well, I'm an old-fashioned one as well. Um, phone is my first love. Um, that probably comes from a background of being in phone sales for quite a few years, so I've spent a lot of time on the phone. I think for referrals um it's a lot easier to explain the nitty-gritty of what's involved in a phone call it would involve probably 10 emails with all the questions that get asked so you can get right to the nuts and bolts of a, of a conversation with a phone call um and um once it becomes a live case then it goes between phone call and email uh, but I get, as I said earlier, I get messages, can you ring, can you do this, um, through sort of um, Messenger, uh, not um, WhatsApp, thankfully. But yeah, one one of those two platforms tends to be sort of more of a live chat with somebody or will ask questions. But I, I tend to sort of move on to email once it becomes official, if you like. And then we're exchanging a lot of technical information and details, so it tends to be easier to keep a track on. Okay, sounds pretty good. I think everyone's in the same boat here. Uh, phone is, for most customers, generally the best way. I must admit, if I send out, let's just say, okay, I'll, we deal with a lot of trade stuff these days because obviously tech for tech, that's a, what we deal with. Um, so we're talking to vendors and distributors. We find if I make a phone call to them, there's a 60, 65% chance rough that I've basically made a sale then and there of whether it's advertising or some form of uh, uh, turning up to an event or whatever. But if I do it over text and messenger, I can find that it can be as low as 10%. Um, a lot of times it just gets read or they don't read it and so forth. When you actually get that proper voice communication with people, it, t it tends to... Uh, work a lot better what i find what works even better if you go to an event with them something let's say there's a trade show or networking event or whatever usually after a few pints uh then communication usually goes uh, very well then uh and generally you can do quite a few deals uh, believe it or not after a couple of pints to be honest with you i think that's uh, uh i don't know if that's uh good for my side of things and bad for their side of things i don't know but uh, but it, it seems to work for me anyway but i can understand you're not going to take all everyone's going to take the customers to the pub every night so uh, but yeah voice communication uh, i think works probably the best if you can't do it on a one-to-one -one basis and obviously in a store or something like that and that works the same for social media i find that if people can actually see you and hear you it works better than just a picture and that's a, a picture is a lot better than text so uh, um it's one of those things that gives people that more personal touch rather than just the thing they're just talking to a corporate body or whatever it may be right I do think, I do think people can actually hide behind email as well um it's, sure. it's, it's when you come to a sort of more of a sales or perspective um it's a lot easier to put them on the spot and i don't mean that in, in an awful way <laughs> but they can they can it's a lot easier for them to, to to tell you how they feel on an email because they've not got to face you or actually talk to you. Yeah. Um, so they do tend to hide behind those things as well. Yeah, a lot of people can. I wanted to pick up on that real quick. Just mm -hmm. just, just one comment on that with, with um, I have found uh, that no matter how many times I'm, um, you know, within an email dialogue and I say, you know, I would love to call you, let's chat about it. Inevitably, I would say it's more probably eight times out of 10, maybe even nine times out of 10 that somebody would rather carry on um with the email conversation and so my other advice there is to just really develop your your content to be as personal you know without being cheesy love that word you mm -hmm. know as uh, as you can 
So that's just, that's again, that's for me. It could be because of the, um, the international aspect. We have customers all over the world. So, and maybe you too, Allison, I don't know, but that's how it is. Even when you pick up the phone, it's like, let's stick with the email, please. Okay. That's it. So yeah, if you're communicating with people all around the world, you're going to have a few uh, difficulties with the uh, language sometimes, aren't you? <laughs> so right, yeah, guys, it's the end of the show. Yeah, it's all right. I think there's a bit of lag there on your end, Sharon. So, but yeah, okay, guys, it's gone nine o'clock. We're going to call it a night for now. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to add in just last minute, Alison, Ben, Will, or Sharon, just before we call it a night? Um, I Very... say keep your customers updated. I call my customers all the way. So, if I'm having us, part, Bill. <laughs> I'll call them, let them know the parts arrived and it's going to be fitted at this date. Um, and they really appreciate it. Just all those updates rather than just book in, call when it's done. I like to put the steps in between. Okay. That's absolutely brilliant. Right, guys, we're going to call it there. The show is on every Thursday night at 8 o'clock. But actually next week we probably won't be on um, because we've got a few things dealing with, not only with the Facebook issue, but a few other things. Uh, nothing bad. It's actually quite good, but nothing I can talk about at the moment. So fingers crossed next uh, – well, we probably won't be on next week anyway. Let's put it that way. So uh, I'd like to say thank you for Alison for joining us tonight. I'd also like to say thank you to Will, Ben, and Sharon. It's been a good show. Thank you for everyone who's been watching. Looks like Cormac just logged in. Sorry, Cormac, you've uh, missed out on the uh, show tonight. So I'll leave you to nice sunny <laughs> island. Uh, and uh, uh, it's Friday there in, uh, I think he said he was, uh, was it Australia you were in? So, uh, yeah, so thanks for watching all the way from the other side of the world. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to leave you with this and we'll see you all next time, whether it's next week or in two weeks' time. So good night, everyone, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.